grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this day is the gospel lesson for this day, John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And we look at it under the theme, Peace Be With You. <clears throat> there was a first grade teacher, and she uh, t tells a story about the three little pigs to her class. And so she says to them, she says, and so the pig went up to the man with the wheelbarrow full of straw and said, pardon me, sir, but might I have some straw to build my house? The teacher says, what do you think that man said? The little boy had an answer. He raised his hand and said, I know, I know. He said, holy smokes, the talking pig. Well, we might say the same thing. Holy smoke is a talking pig. Because if a pig is talking, that's a miracle. Yes, that's a miracle for us if that, if that happens. And miracles are not easily understood, and miracles are not always easy to accept it, really. But also, we celebrate today, as we did last Sunday, we celebrate a miracle. We celebrate the miracle of the resurrection. And that is truly a miracle that we need to see in, in, our, in our lives and understand in our lives. Our sinful self has problems with accepting uh, that. And our world has problems with it. They don't accept miracles and that at all. And the Satan definitely tempts you and me not to believe any miracles in life at all. And so we need to, we need to see that always in our life. And finally, it comes down to you and me. <clears throat> we can't even believe by our own power. We need somebody to truly help us and lead and guide us in our life that we can truly believe at all. Well, the disciples, as we meet up with the disciples after the resurrection, we see they had problems also. Now, one disciple stands out in our text today, and his, his name is Thomas, because he uh, is many times called Doubting Thomas because he's not ready to just accept the word of others that Jesus has risen from the dead. But really, we have to always understand Sometimes we think of Thomas as really the, the bad guy that, he, that did, he didn't believe. But the fact is, none of the disciples really believed in the resurrection to begin with. They all went out to that tomb on, on Easter morning expecting to, that the tomb was sealed, expecting Jesus was still dead. And truly, that's what they were expecting. And so nobody was expecting Jesus. They didn't see that Jesus had risen from the dead. And so they kept questioning that. We know that even after they, uh, some of them said they saw him and so forth, the Emmaus disciples on, on Easter Sunday afternoon are walking towards Emmaus. You remember the story where Jesus joins them, they don't under, under, recognize Jesus right away. But they're discussing concerning what has happened, and he said some have said they've seen the Lord, and, but they question that. So yes, accepting the resurrection was not easy for his disciples probably wouldn't have been easy for you and me either if we'd have been there. <clears throat> and so there, there's a real doubt there. And so it's not just a Thomas. The disciples also lack something else. And we see Jesus recognizing that as he comes to them. As he comes to them that first Easter evening, which is the first part of our text. Our first part of our text happens on Easter evening, on that first Sunday. The second part of our text today happens a week later. Anyway, as Jesus comes to his disciples, he knows what they need. What does he say? Peace be with you. They were troubled. They were, they, were, they were complexed with what was happening. Jesus died on the cross and all these things. The tomb is empty and those kinds of things. They were really perplexed. And so Jesus comes to them with comforting words and says, peace be with you. He comes to you and me this morning. And he says to us also in our busy lives that we have, he says to you and me, peace be with you. And so Jesus comes. Remember now that he comes the first e Sunday evening. The disciples are all gathered together except one. And that is Thomas. And so Thomas says to, to the other disciples when they tell them, well, the Lord's risen. Now, Thomas, he, he, he doesn't, uh, doesn't believe that. We don't know a lot about Thomas. He's also called in our gospel lesson this morning, Didymus. But uh, Thomas, we know, was not a coward. And that's reflected for us in another part of Scripture. 
where Jesus, the, the, the opposition of Jesus is growing in Jerusalem, and he and his disciples are in Galilee. And they get word that Jesus' close friend Lazarus, the brother of, of Martha and Mary, is seriously ill. And so Jesus is going up to Jerusalem. And it's, it, the opposition is great in, in Jerusalem for Jesus. And so the disciples are fearful of that. And what does Thomas say? Thomas says this, let us, go, let us also go, that we may die with him. You see, Thomas is ready to die with Jesus. He's not a coward. He truly trusted that. We also know that Thomas is an individual that sometimes he speaks, and he speaks maybe what the other disciples don't, they're thinking, but don't say. Because in the upper room, Jesus says these comforting words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to a prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. He says, you know the way where I'm going. Well, it's Thomas that speaks up. And he says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Yes, he's brutally honest. That's what Thomas is. He says, we don't know the way, Lord. You've got to tell us. And he's probably, and the other disciples probably uh, understood that too. So we need to understand Thomas a little bit on this. And so he is the one then. That when he's not there that first Easter evening, he says to the other disciples, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where his, the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. He was a cautious man. He was a man of integrity. He was a man who wanted facts. Yes. Well, Jesus came. And as he comes to his disciples and he says to his disciples on that second Easter evening, he comes to them and he says, peace be with you. Again. And Thomas is there. And so Jesus shows him his hands and his side and so forth to Thomas. He says, put your finger into the nail prints of my hand, and so forth. And what does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. You see the faith of Thomas. My Lord and my God. There's no question for Thomas that, yes, this is my Lord and my God. And that needs to be our confession always also. My Lord and my God. Because he truly is that for us. We human beings many times limit ourselves in what we do and how we function. There was a, a, a philosopher, Jim Rohn, he asked the question, how big will a tree grow? Think of that for a minute. Well, a tree will grow as big as it can. It will send down its roots as deep as it can. It will produce a amount, a great amount of limbs as much as it can. It will produce as many leaves as it can. It goes to its fullest extent that it can. And that's true for so much of nature. But that's not true of us human beings. Because us human beings, we make decisions, don't we? We make decisions, and sometimes we limit ourselves in our decisions, and we don't do as much as we could. We don't do as much as the Lord blesses us. We don't reach out as the Lord calls on us to. We limit ourselves. Yes. And we need to, under, we need to understand that in our lives so often, uh, in our lives. Jesus also said something else as he speaks to Thomas here. He says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That message is for you and me. Because you and I were not there when Jesus rose from the dead. We were not there in that room when Jesus presented himself to Thomas and said, put your finger here in the nail marks of my hand. No, we weren't. And so we are those, and Jesus says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Yes, we do not see him with our physical eyes and that resurrected Lord, and yet we believe, and that's what God has called you and me to do. <clears throat> there was a college student, comes home on a college break, goes to his uh, church and, uh, to visit with his pastor. He comes into the pastor's office and he says to the pastor, he says, I've lost my faith. 
The pastor said, that's good. <laughs> that's not something he, uh, he thought he would hear. The student answered, you weren't listening. I said I've discovered things at the university that have taken away my faith. And the pastor said, if your faith can be lost that easily, it's not the faith you need. Now you can replace it with real faith. My friends, we need real faith. We need the faith that God the Holy Spirit gives us that in, the, in the, all our world around here is trying to tell you and me Jesus Christ did not die for our sins. The world around us is telling you and me Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead. It tells us all those things. And the world is always out there to lead us away from that. And so we need a real faith. A real faith that only God the Holy Spirit can give you and me to trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That no matter what comes in our life, we hold on to that faith and don't give it up. That's, that's the real kind of faith, but only God can give that faith to you and me. We have a gracious God, a wonderful God, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Think of what we celebrated during Lent, Holy Week, last Sunday. We co contemplated all what our Lord did for us. We contemplated how our Lord walked the way of sorrows. We contemplated how our Lord suffered for you and for me. He took the ridicule of human beings upon his shoulders. He was the one that was whipped for you and me. He was the one crucified on the cross for our sins and died there on that cross for you and for me. That's the Lord we have. And then he rose from the dead. That tomb is empty. And so the great news for you and for me is that Jesus Christ is victor over all. That's the God we worship. The God who could raise himself from the dead is the God that can raise you and me from the dead also at the end of time. And we need to believe that. We need to trust in that. Yes. He finds you and me too today. He comes to you and me and he says, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. You and I can believe because of what God does for you and me. And the, Jesus promised to his disciples in the upper room these words. He said, But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. He says he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Lord did that on Pentecost. And he does that every day. You and I read the scriptures. Every time we hear God's word, every time we come to the sacrament of Holy Communion and receive the body and the blood of Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, is coming through these means of grace into our hearts to lead and guide us so that we can truly believe. And so, yes, and the scriptures are there given for you and me. I always like the words at the end of the Gospel of John where we read these words. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Yes, we may have life in his name as we believe and trust in him. That we truly read the word of God, study the word of God, believe the word of God by the power of the Spirit. And may that Holy Spirit lead each and every one of us to greater faith every day of our life. And may he strengthen our faith this day through his word and may he strengthen our faith this day as again we come before his altar here to receive his body and blood in, our, in the sacrament. And so, let our challenge be. Seek Christ by reading and hearing the word of God and confess always with Thomas, my Lord and my God. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.